Hey, it's Amber from Express Truck Tax, and today I have the unique opportunity to speak with one of the trucking industry's biggest radio personalities, Mr. Dave, or as you might know him, Dave Nemo. During the interview, he'll talk a little bit about his history in the trucking industry, what he's learned during his years of dealing with the trucking industry and truckers. And I love what he says about um, what he's learned. So um, pay close attention to that. And then um, he also gives a couple tips for drivers who are looking to get into the industry. So those are very um, helpful and insightful tips from somebody who's been in the industry for close to 50 years. So I hope that you enjoy this interview and I'll be back later. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, Mr. Nemo, it is a pleasure to be able to just speak with you as an industry professional. And I really appreciate you taking the time to join me today. Amber, it's a great pleasure to be here, but uh, just call me, well, actually, don't call me Mr. Nemo. You can call me Mr. Dave. Mr. Dave, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Um, well, it's great to be here with you, and uh, thank you for uh, for having me. I don't do very much video, so this is kind of kind of cool. Yeah, awesome. Well, I just wanted to talk with you a few minutes about your um history in the trucking industry and how you got into the industry and, and what you've learned. And I understand that you just finished um, or you're coming up on 50 years in broadcasting. So congratulations. Well, thank you. That's, yeah. a, that's a huge milestone. It is. Um, I didn't know you could stay under the radar that long. You know what I mean? But uh, that's, uh, I kind of I kind of did it coming out of the tunnel now, you know. But yeah, it's been uh, it's been a, an, an incredible um, experience uh, getting to um, meet uh, a population of the country that uh, not a lot of people know about, uh, and yet uh, truck drivers and their families are everywhere. Um, I think. One out of six people in the country is involved in transportation. Now, not necessarily driving trucks, of course, but you're right. involved in transportation. You know, right. when you think about the folks in your company, because um, you are, are express trucks, truck tax. So you 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 know what um, what it takes to be a truck driver, what it takes to be a fleet owner, and uh, all of the trials and tribulations. Um, so it's um, it's a very un uncelebrated section of our population. I always compare teachers and truckers, you know? Yes. So they're, they're the, the, uh, vi uh, the vital nature of what they do and the little recognition they get for it. Right, right. So if you will just kind of go through and tell me how you got into the trucking industry. Have you always done broadcasting for the trucking industry or did you start in, in something else and then kind of transition into the industry or how did you get your start doing what you do? Well, it all started when I was uh, just about two years old. Um, I, uh, my, I came from a, a, a music loving family, not a musical family. And it's funny how you can uh, remember certain little things in your life that really imprint. And when I was a little boy, I was uh, I was born up in Illinois. Mm -hmm. I was raised in Mississippi, and then from high school on, I was in uh, New Orleans here okay. uh, for about 18 years. Beginning in uh, the mid 90s, I was in Nashville. Now I'm back in New Orleans. Uh, I, I mention that only because up in Chicago, uh, there's a radio program back. There was a radio program called the National Barn Dance. That's the show that the Grand Ole Opry kind of copied from, if you will. And I remember um, the family used to listen to it every Saturday night. And for some reason, about two years old, I remember hearing I'm Moving On by Hank Snow on that show. You know, where it starts off, you know, and I, I was glued to that, uh, that sound and that music. And that's the first song, that's the first record I ever remember 
fast forward through my boyhood years and whatnot, I, I started taking guitar lessons in the third grade. I played snare drum and French horn in the orchestras. I was in bands in wow. high school and college. So I was always a musician. I was all, it was always right. a music for me. My introduction to radio was as a music director of my campus radio station uh, here in New Orleans at Loyola. Um, it was in its infancy, the, the, the department, it went on to world renown after I left, you know, but, right. um, uh, and so um, when I went, uh, when I was the program director of the radio station, I, uh, music was the thing, radio was a vehicle for music to be heard. Right, right. When I was a boy, I, uh, when I got older, I, I used to listen to the radio all the time, and I realized that what made it so much more fun than just listening to records were the disc jockeys. The disc jockeys, they, they made it exciting, they made it fun. Mm -hmm. uh, it, feel like you were in you're in the in crowd so to speak you know and you're just a kid and you're you know back in those days um the typical high schooler would be locked up in their room listening to the radio right you know? um and so th th that's where it really got started the trucking thing um it, it really kind of happened just almost by accident um i got hired on at wwl when i was a senior in college Mm -hmm. I was the first kid they hired. I was the first part-timer ever. Mm -hmm. And the union and everything. And I, I was a disc jockey, did, played some music, read the weather in the news, you know, that, that sort of thing on Saturdays right. and Sundays. And then um, when uh, the um, Vietnam uh, lottery came up, I don't know if you, if you, if you remember, you, you're not old enough to remember that, but back no. uh, in um, 1970, they had a bunch of guys in suits on this big stage with, you know, those uh, big hoppers where they pull out the lottery numbers? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, balls? Yes. Well, that's what they did. They had a lottery. And um, your birthday, whenever your birthday came up, that was your lottery number. And my lottery number was 16, which meant that I was going to get drafted. So I just went ahead and joined the Army. I'd been in the ROTC, and I was ready to go anyway. So I joined the Army, and I wound up, of all things, by the grace of God, I wound up on the radio in Seoul, Korea, at the Yongsan Army Air Force Base. Um, and had a program called Nemo's Nightbeat. I was on from 6 to midnight. And I played. Really? I came back when I came back uh, to New Orleans. So I came back home after the army. I went back to WWL to see if there were any job openings. Um, now, back in those days, if you had a full time job, uh, they would they were required to give you your job back. But I was just a part timer. Hmm. But as fate would have it, the program director who was there, his name was John Peel, he said, "Dave, can't believe this. You must have just passed a guy." on the sidewalk just now he just walked out the door i had to let him go when can you start wow so charlie okay so okay now let me circle back a little bit um new orleans is not a country music mecca and it wasn't even a a, 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 a way station for country music back in the early right. 70s right but there was one country music station and a fellow named charlie douglas was working there and he went over to um, the ownership of WWL and said, you have this flamethrower of a signal that reaches Egypt. You know, um, in fact, I do have uh, a tape from Egypt. Um, that, that's kind of a freaky thing, though. But um, anyway, uh, to get back down to earth here, he said, you have all these truckers going across the country and nobody's doing right. anything for them. He says, why don't we start a trucking show? And believe it or not, they said yes. So that was when I was in the Army. So when I came back, Charlie was there, and I met him. And mm -hmm. my joke is, beside everybody else, nobody else at the station had any affinity. Trucking radio back then, Amber, was essentially, first of all, it had to be after midnight on the clear channel 50,000 watt AM stations. Right. So they could get out. And uh, basically, there were no issues. Hmm. No FMCSA, that didn't come along until the year 2000. Right. The rules and regs that trucking were, were following in the 60s, 70s, 80s, yeah. they were all going back to the mid-30s. Right. You know? So uh, there were no issues. 
There were no new regs. There were no ELDs. There were no right. nothing. They um, just drown. Nobody knew what sleep apnea was. No, you know, right. there, but nobody. <laughs> so all of that. So what was there left to do? Well, to, right. at, at midnight, when you got somebody going 80, 90 miles an hour, and yeah, that happened back then, going down I-10 in Arizona or I-40 um, yeah. across Tennessee, you kept them awake, you kept them cheerful, kept them engaged because our mandate was to keep people alive by keeping them alert and amused and provide a, um, a friend in, in the, in the camp. Um, and, and so uh, Charlie and I met, hit it off because when I was a musician, um, and, and I still am, but back in those days, I was, I, I was in working bands, we worked. Yeah. We played everything. I was playing in Agata de Vida one night, and Do You Know the Way to San Antone by Charlie Pride the next. So we're playing country music one night, rock and roll the next. Uh, we just played it all. So right. I knew Conway from Twitty, and I was about the only guy besides him there that did. And right. for those who don't know, Conway Twitty was a uh, very famous country music artist. Yeah. Uh, so, but named after two towns, Conway, Arkansas, but in Texas. Mm -hmm. um, his real name was Harold Jenkins, by the way. Really? A little trivia there. Harold Jenkins, yeah, so he was an aspiring baseball player. Hmm. And, and then wound up in, in music, first off rock and roll, and then right. country. And he wound up owning the Nashville Sounds minor league baseball team. But Interesting. I press, and I'm notorious for that. So I. It's all right. I, the only reason I, my, I grew up listening to him at my grandma's house. So there you I'm go. There you go. Yeah. Exactly. So um, so he and I hit it off, and uh, we split the shift. Eventually, I started off on the weekends, and then we split the shift right. during the week. Um, and he was gone a lot, so I was on more than he was, actually. I, I added it up one year, and I was on 68% of the time. Wow. On a 50-50 thing, because he was always traveling and, and, and everything, so I just held down the fort. Uh, and then he left in 84, went to the Grand Ole Opry in WSN in Nashville, and I kind of took over, and then, um, well, here we are on video. Right. Wow. <laughs> That's a... None of this was invented by the, at that time, you know, not even thought of. Right. Wow. That is, that's impressive though. So tell me, um, tell me what you've learned in your history in the, in the trucking industry, how the industry has changed um, and, and, and really what you've learned over the years. I think the most significant and impactful thing that I learned about trucking was not about trucking, but about the truckers. And what I learned right off is that uh, there are no stereotypical truck drivers. And I say that because we are still operating under the, uh, the, the general public is still operating under the impression that it's all about Smokey and the Bandit. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, the, the, that wild and wooly trucking all night, taking right. pills and driving across the country and uh, running several log books and the outlaw image and all of that stuff right. that the movies and the music really portrayed, um, that that's still the way it is. And right. uh, I found out early on that it never really was that way, mm -hmm. you know? It never really was quite that way. Um, art imitates life, but sometimes art exaggerates life to a great degree. So these, right. uh, so I, I really found that I have a great affinity towards drivers. One of the things that Charlie told me early on was that a truck driver, this is 1972, he says a truck driver um, can spot a phony a mile away. And, and, and so he says, just be yourself. They'll either accept you or not. One right. of the things that helped me to be accepted, I think, was the fact that I had just come out of the Army, too. And just about everybody on the road at that time was either in or was going in or had just come, or, you know, just come back or was just going in uh, because right. it was the Vietnam era. And the other thing was that um, besides being a musician, I also worked on the riverfront here. And on the barges, I, I was a fleet man for a company called American Commercial Barge Lines, ACBL. 
So I worked, um, I, I used to get, so I worked four to midnight and my, when I was in high school now and my mom wouldn't let me in that. She told, I had to, I had to take my clothes off before I came inside. That's how That's dirty. <laughs> So in other words, we, 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 I, I'm strictly lower middle class, blue collar guy. Right. And and, right. Um, and, and, and and so we had that affinity, I think. And I think there's a, mm -hmm. genu a genuineness among the trucking population. If you listen to the radio now, we're all talk because there are things to talk about now. Uh, and they'll tell you the, what they think and they'll tell you the way it is. And, well, I do too. So I think we kind of we're on the same playing field. So that's what I've learned mainly. The other stuff, nuts and bolts, the ins and outs, what you do is so important. Um, I know all about that. And to find out about that, I talk to you. They need to know from me. They need to know from you. And that's what we try to provide. We try to provide a platform for information as well as entertainment. So we, we cover the gambit of the lifestyle. I, mean, I don't want to say we're the first of this and first of that, but I do know that we were um, among the very first of the health and wellness pioneers. Right. We couldn't get arrested by talking about health and wellness. And now look where that is now. They even have health pavilions at the truck shows. Yeah. Um, and, and so we do that and, and other things too. Um, the St. Christopher Fund is the, the thing I'm most proud of. Right. Uh, John Miguel, again, my business partner, Michael Burns, and I cooked up that crazy idea. And now mm -hmm. 10 years later, there it is, you know? Right. Uh, and we've got incredible partners with uh, folks like T.A. Petro and others. So they're having their uh, band together uh, campaign right now. Right. Uh, wristbands, you know, and things like that, keychains. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, yeah, so we 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 also uh, basically came to understand fairly fairly rapidly that trucking is much more than a job. It's much more than a profession. Uh, it's all of that, but it's really a lifestyle. We right. all have our lifestyles, uh, and that is a definite lifestyle. Right. I always I always say it's a community. It's a one of a kind community where they all they band together they understand each other and there's um there's a there's a trucker language they know what mm -hmm. they're talking about they're very knowledgeable in and what they're doing and um and that's that's what i've learned is just that they it's a community it's it's an it's an interesting industry for sure it is it is um a lot of the folks that are getting into trucking now are a little different than the folks who were getting when I when I got into trucking a new driver was a young driver yeah um, and nowadays a new driver is probably going to be 40 45 50 years old mm -hmm. uh, just because of the changing face of our society of our economy um, and um, there are folks out there driving trucks and you know this you talk to drivers all the time you know there are folks out there who are 40 50 years old and they've been doing this job and that job and they said you know what i really always wanted to do was drive a truck and they finally get the opportunity or finally break down to go ahead and jump in and go to trucking right. school and, and start a new career and they're 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 very happy you know most of the people complain about trucking 99.9 percent .9 of the time but that 0.1 percent of the time they'll tell you but i love it right do it unless you love it right 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 yeah well, it's it's a unless you've loved it i mean right you know yeah, I bet if folks saw what you did on a daily basis, they'd be exhausted just watching you and their brain would probably be fried. You have right. to look what you do. Right, right. No, that's true. Um, and, and so I guess lastly, I would ask you, what, what, what advice would you give to somebody who is going out on their own and maybe they've been a company driver or a lease driver and now they're doing exactly what you were just talking about and they're going to go out on their own? What advice would you give to new drivers? And new drivers in the sense that they've been company drivers and want to branch out as owner operators, you mean? Yeah, that or, or oh. just somebody looking at the industry and saying, hey, oh, I think oh, I want to get into okay. it. Uh, well, um, for folks in the industry, I would say talk to as many people as you can. Mm -hmm. um, 
kind of reminds me of a little joke. A couple of truck drivers wind up at a truck stop together. They get out of their trucks. They're walking up towards the cafe. And um, Bob says, hey, excuse me, sir. I noticed you drive for ABC. He says, I've always been wondering about that company. It's a pretty good company. And the fellow says, oh, it's a great company. He says, I love it. I've been here for 17 years. I, I, you couldn't ask for a better company. And so Bob, uh, thank you, you know, and they, uh, they part ways. And about six months later, same thing happens. These two guys wind up at the same truck stop, same time. They're getting out of the truck together. And Bob what runs over to that guy and says, hey, 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 you remember me? I asked you about how good this company was, and you said how great it was. I haven't been home for six months. And he says, yeah, ain't that great? Yeah. Talk to as many people as you can so that you get as many views of what they're doing as you can and then put them all together mm. and then see where you fit in on that scale. Because for some, well, you know, one man's uh, treasure, you know, um, and, and, and so really find out from other drivers in the industry, different right. types of drivers, what where would you like to be, you know? And there's so many, you know, back again, going back to the early 70s, there was there was an occupation called truck driver. And it meant, here's the truck, here's your keys, here's your map, we'll see you later, okay? Now, call when you need, I need a load. Um, now it's like, well, do you want to run regional? Or do you want to run overnight? Do you want to run coast to coast? And there are so many configurations of fleets and that's always changing, always right. metamorphosizing. Um, the other thing I would say, and I know this is probably not what you're asking, even within the trucking industry media, but certainly in the general media, there has been a big run up of stories about robot trucks, autonomous trucking, three and a half million truck drivers out of work by next Thursday, you know, no, right. that's not going to happen. Um, and nobody's going to really be out of work because of autonomous trucks. Some mm -hmm. jobs are going to change and probably change for the better. Right. So don't let that be a hindrance. And I know there's a lot of fear about the unknown, but every day is the unknown. Yeah, for sure. Wow. I, um, wow, you shared such knowledgeable information um, just from being in the industry for so long. I so appreciate you being with us and just taking a few minutes out of your day to just talk with us. And, um, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. You too, Amber. Thank you so much for uh, for having me on. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thank you. How awesome was that? I loved getting to interview Mr. Dave Nemo, and I just want to, again, thank him for his time and for all of the information that he was able to share. So don't forget to listen to The Dave Nemo Show live weekdays from 7 to 11 a.m. Eastern. And then if you love this video, and I know that you will, don't forget to like this video, share this video with your friends and your family, and then don't forget to like us on all of our social. We are active on social and we're constantly posting updates and things to help you be successful as a truck driver. So like and share this video and then like us on our social pages. Thank you so much. Have a great week. Bye guys.